Welcome to our first Talking Bullshit Behind the Table video. And in this first episode, I wanna talk about how we made our latest cinematography reel, share our creative process behind it, some difficulties and challenges we faced, and uh, we're gonna give you guys some tips along the way which you can use to create your own reel. And if you don't have one, you should definitely make one. Because I remember back in the day, 2017 or 2018, when a client asked to see our portfolio, and like this was before we had our first showreel. So a client asks for a portfolio and we would just send like five or six different links to our best videos and call it a day. Now, there are two problems with that. Number one, as we later found out, pretty much every single time when a client was presented with our five links, he or she would open just one of them and didn't even bother looking at the rest. And number two, let's say this client is interested in a real estate video, but the link you gave him and uh, the link he opened uh, is something completely irrelevant. Like it has nice shots, a nice edit, but let's say it's something like uh, drift championship, cars, racing, tournaments, something like that. Something completely irrelevant to him. So he might just move on to a different filmmaker because he doesn't want to waste any more of his time uh, going through all your links and just hoping that he would find something that is uh, you know, the thing he's actually looking for. So naturally you understand where the power of a cinematography reel comes into play. It shows a lot of different stuff in a very short period of time. And that is actually our number one tip. Make your reel short. It should be a minute or two, but no longer than that. Now, our videos usually have a really fun and positive vibe. So why did we make our reel so slow and dreamy this time? By the way, guys, if you haven't seen our reel, go check it out here. And uh, one more important thing, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but 93% of you guys who are watching this video right now are not subscribed to your YouTube channel. 93%, uh, like seriously, smash that subscribe button. Okay, so why did we chose a style like this for a reel? Is there something wrong with a video having a fun and positive vibe? No, of course not. But in my personal opinion, a video like that will mostly attract clients who are interested into, uh, in uh, event videos, weddings, maybe a few music videos and product videos along the way, but mostly events. And honestly, I've, I'm really tired of filming those. I've done a lot of them and I never really enjoyed the process of making one. Even though they might pay well sometimes, I don't want to do it just because of the money. So this brings us to the next tip. Know your place as a filmmaker. Think about what kinds of videos you want to do in the future, what is your dream project, what inspires you as a filmmaker. Basically figure out your target audience. So do we know all of this stuff? Um, no, because we still film all kinds of different projects. We might film an event video on one day, then on the second day we might film something else, and on the third day we might do like a cinematic uh, travel video or something. So at the moment we really want to focus on narrowing our niche down so people understand what Dream Duo Films is and what types of videos we produce. Uh, so I started to think about my dreams as a filmmaker and what inspires me. And for me, the biggest inspiration has always been uh, movies and that feeling when you're watching something and your jaw drops on the floor and you're just fucking blown away by the cinematography, the subject matter, the framing, the composition, like everything. And uh, that's what I wanted to achieve with this reel, creating that wow moment. And by the way, guys, if you're interested in the last movie that gave me that wow moment, it was 2019's Shadow. And if you haven't seen it and you're a filmmaker, definitely watch this one because like every single shot in that movie is a piece of art. But yeah, I wanted to focus on cinematography only, like 100%, no editing gimmicks, no fancy transitions and flashy effects and light leaks and that sort of thing. Actually, we do have one light leak there at the end, but so that brings us to the next tip, which is don't use too many transitions, flashy effects, uh, some stuff that's going to hide the fact that your shot doesn't look good. Now, of course, there are some exceptions, like if you're doing some crazy music videos or some party club stuff. And I do know a few people who, who are really into this style and that's perfectly fine. But if I'm going for cinematography only, I don't want anything to be in the way. I, I want that shot to be impressive. And uh, if my shot doesn't look good, I don't need to mask it with transitions and effects and something like that. Now, a perfect example of this would be, uh, a transition is like a really simple card trick that can still fool people. Let's say this one. So one, two, and three. Now, if you don't know how this works, it might uh, appear that the card magically changed into another card, but in reality, all I'm doing is this. 
and the thing that sells this illusion is my hand movement. And basically that's the rule of magic, larger motion covers the smaller motion. So combine the huge hand movement with this little gesture and you wouldn't even see that I'm flicking my little finger here. And you could think of this as a transition. So this hand movement is a transition and then this lame thing is your shot. <laughs> so I guess you understand the point. I don't want my videos to feel that way. I want the shot itself without any transitions and effects to feel awesome. And I think that's what cinematography is. And again, there are people like Sam Calder who can do this really good, but I think too many people just rely on these fancy effects. So yeah, for this video, I just went with simple cuts because I wanted to feel more filmish, more serious. And probably there are some people who might uh, think that that's boring, that's uh, too slow and stuff. And that's fine, I get it. Everyone has a different opinion. But uh, if I want to create films, if I want to create documentaries and short films and uh, super amazing cinematic, uh, I don't know, commercials and stuff like that, uh, that's the style I'm going to be going for. All right, next up, choosing the right clips. Now, we shot a lot of travel videos, obviously, so most of our good footage comes from those travels. But I was careful not to pick something that looked too touristy. You know, I was, like I was just in a pretty place uh, and I just pulled out my camera and took a screenshot of whatever. I didn't want it to feel that way. You know, you can compare these two shots of the famous lake Lago di Brias. I don't know about you, but the second one feels like I just bought my new drone, launched it really high up in the air and pressed the button, while the first one looks more focused and thought out. And here is another bad example. If I color grade the shot, it actually looks quite good, but it feels so touristy, like I just pulled out my Nikon with a kit lens and just pressed the button. See where I'm going with this? So I used shots which were more planned out, that required a bit of commitment and uh, knowledge of great framing and composition rules and all of that stuff. For example, this one, where we were just walking down this mountain and I visualized this shot right here. So I set up my tripod, my camera, and um, you know walked there to do some fake acting. And it resulted in me capturing my favorite shot ever, I think. <laughs> and this, I guess, brings up another tip, which is store your footage, save your footage. Because you might do a project and think, oh, I don't need this anymore, but trust me, you do. When you will create your reel, you will need all of this footage from a year ago or two years ago. And yeah, some of this footage is literally two years old. And that's totally fine because, uh, because a lot of those shots are still super good and super great and we can include them in the reel and I'm super happy that we can do that. I'm super happy that we had those hard drives where we could save these files up to. So yeah, get a lot of hard drives. It's a part of being a filmmaker, trust me. So yeah, save your footage and plan out which clips to use. So then we move on to choosing the right music. And this is a difficult topic for me because I have a very interesting taste to say the least. So initially I wanted to go for something eerie because I like suspense and tension. But although I might find this eerie vibe to be super cool, for a lot of viewers it might uh, make them feel uncomfortable because for them eerie vibe is not cool and amazing, it's actually scary. <laughs> and uh, So I think you should go your way 100% and then dial that back to 60%. So this was my first choice of music initially. And then later I found this track, which uh, is still super cinematic, but it's a lot more relaxing and uh, positive. So basically stay away from super specific types of music like heavy metal, hardcore dubstep and uh, that sort of thing. And by the way guys, if you're interested where we get our music from, it's from artlist.io. Uh, since they have the biggest library of music which gets updated constantly and they have no licensing bullshit you can, you can just download the music and use it however you want and in my opinion it's super affordable at just $1.99 a year and uh, if you guys use our link in the description you can get an additional two months for free so thank me later. All right, but that's pretty much it. It's a wrap. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I hope these tips can help you in uh, creating your own reel. So yeah, you know the drill. Peace out.